All right, so we're diving into something pretty interesting today. Yeah. Kind of a um, a collision of music and activism. And audience engagement, I yeah, think. Yeah, for sure. And um, definitely. our uh, subject this time is Tom York. Lead singer of Radiohead, of course. Right. right. And um, he had this incident. Recently. During his solo tour. In Australia. Right in Australia. At the Sydney Meyer Music Bowl in Melbourne. No, just to give a little background. Yeah. York, you know, he's known for... His really kind of introspective lyrics and experimental soundscapes. Right, very much so. Yeah. But um, during this performance... A protester disrupted the set. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, demanded that York condemn the violence in Gaza. And specifically calling it Israeli genocide. Right. Now, this really brings up some interesting questions. Yeah, it does. About the role of artists in political discourse. Sure. And how these unexpected moments can totally change. Completely change. From just entertainment into a platform for something much bigger. Right. And I think a lot of people would agree. Yeah. That it definitely became something much bigger than just a concert. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is York didn't just like, you know. Call security. Right. He stopped the performance. Yeah, he stopped the performance. Why well, not the protester directly? Yeah. Invited him on stage for a conversation. Really unexpected. Yeah. Totally shifted the whole mood. Yeah. You know, from an audience perspective, yeah. you're there to listen to music. To enjoy an evening out. Right. And suddenly you're... You're in this very charged situation. Right. Yeah. A, a really charged, unscripted moment. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen next. And reports are saying that the audience reaction was kind of mixed. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. You, know, you have some people who probably applauded York for engaging directly like that. Right. And others who are probably or, thinking, see, you know, the protester has a point. Right. He's got something to say. It's a complex situation. It really is. It really speaks to how our own personal beliefs can kind of come out yeah. in these very public spaces. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes collide a little bit. And it's interesting. Yeah. Because this isn't the first time York has dealt with this sort of thing. Right. You know, Radiohead got a lot of criticism a few years ago for performing in Israel. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, there were calls to boycott. For them to cancel the shows. People were debating, you know, what is the responsibility of an artist in choosing where they perform? And York defended their decision. Yeah, he said, you know, playing in a country doesn't mean you endorse everything that government does. Makes sense to me. Yeah, and I think a lot of artists would agree with that. But it does bring up this bigger question. Yeah. Where is the line? Where is the line between art and activism? Yeah. Can you be? Can you just be a musician? Can you just make music and perform it? Right. And have it not be seen. Through this political lens. Uh, and then I wonder, Yeah. for someone like York, who has such a huge platform. Oh, does it even matter what his intention is? That's a really interesting point. You know, because even if he thinks... That he's just making music. Just making music. The audience is going to interpret it. In so many different ways. And they might see a message there whether he intended it or not. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh, and there's another layer to this whole thing. Okay. After he left the stage... Yeah. York actually came back out. He did. And performed Karma Police. One of their biggest songs. Yeah. I love that song. So the lyrics are all about... Guilt and justice and... Societal control. Yeah. Which, you know, given what had just happened with the protester... Right. You could really read into that. Yeah, you could definitely interpret it in a lot of different ways. Was he trying to unify the audience with this song? Right. Or was he subtly responding to the protester? Well, maybe he was just processing the whole experience through the music. I mean... Like, I think that's the beauty of art. Yeah. You know, it's open to interpretation. And it keeps the conversation going. It really does. It does. And this whole incident with York and the protester. It really shows you what's happening in society right now. In a bigger way. Yeah. You know, it's like we're... We're living in a time when it's hard to have... These difficult conversations. Especially about things like global conflict. Yeah. And who would have thought... That a concert... Which is usually just for fun. Just pure entertainment. Could turn into this platform for, you know. Political expression. Yeah. It really pushes the boundaries of yeah. what we expect. From a live show. And reminds us that. Art can be a powerful tool. For starting conversations. And confronting these uncomfortable truths. So this whole thing in Melbourne with York. It leaves us with a lot to think about. I think so too. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just a concert. Well. It was this no, that meant work. art and personal beliefs and the audience. All collided. And it makes you think yeah. about how these unexpected things can happen. And inspire change. And make us 
look at our own role in these big issues. Right. And encourage us to talk to each other. Even when it's hard. Even when it's hard. Yeah. And that's really powerful. It is. So I want to leave you with this question. Okay. If you had been in that audience in Melbourne. That night. How would you have felt? Would you have seen it as this disruption this annoying thing or as this really powerful moment something meaningful yeah something to really engage with i think it's a question worth asking ourselves yeah especially as we see this relationship between art and activism and audience participation become more and more complex yeah so until next time keep thinking keep thinking about these things about these things yeah